atomic tracer. Fun struck. Here we are, the, uh, the Royal Observatory in Edinburgh, and like many observatories around the world, it's, got, uh, it's, it's built on a hill, so we have lovely views of, uh, in this case, over the city of Edinburgh. So you can see, uh, of course, everyone knows Arthur's Seat over there, mm -hmm. just nearby. Uh, in the infrared, we could barely see over to Arthur's Seat at, at uh, six microns. Um, and then the, you see the, the, uh, the Firth of Forth there, uh, going up towards the castle that you can see over in that direction. And then on a beautiful day like today because it's so sunny. Uh, well, thank you very much for, uh, for uh, um, hosting us here at the observatory. Um, can you show us maybe some of uh, what you're working on right now? This is where we assemble the instruments, the infrared cameras and spectrometers that uh, we use on, on the uh, best observatories in the world. But this is uh, the cryostat for the Moon's instrument, the multi-object spectrometer that works at the, in the near infrared wavelengths. It's going to be delivered in, uh, in sometime this summer to the uh, VLT, so the Very Large Telescopes in Chile. Uh, the, well, the latest instrument we built, the four moons that, that were, that, that's been in the news for the last couple of years, is the MIRI imager and spectrometer, where here in Edinburgh, we led the design and the engineering of the whole instrument. So um, when you say that it was it led from Edinburgh, um, was that the whole uh, conception uh, and some of the building as well? Of course it was a collaboration between uh, 10 European countries and a couple of institutes in the United States as well, mm -hmm. but all driven from here in Edinburgh. So I was the instrument scientist for MIRI. The optical design was led from here, so that's, you know, how do we focus the light? Uh, how do we build a spectrometer that is, is light enough but strong enough to, to be launched into space on a rocket? A kind of a, a lifetime experience for me. The team were young, diverse, and they performed spectacularly well. Um, and so at what point, at what time was uh, the MIRI instrument delivered uh, to, uh, to Houston to, to, to make those final tests? Because it's obviously it's, it's much longer ago in the, in the timeline yes. uh, than, than the final launch. These things, they are a life's work. There was a decade to build it, mm -hmm. then, then it was a decade of testing it. And we had to test it over and over again as the spacecraft was built up around us. So every time you know, the, the, another instrument would arrive, we would make sure that there was no interference or crosstalk. And every time we had a bit more capability so our tests could be a bit more flight-like. Because mm -hmm. that's the mantra. Yeah, you, need to, you want to always test your instrument as it's going to be used in flight. And so, yeah. Our so we'll, we'll head this way. Yeah, great.